Okay, in this video we're going to look at getting user input in an app through text fields. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create two different variables. One will be for a, a, a text label that I have below that's going to just give the user instructions. Just telling them what I want them to do and if they've done something correct or incorrectly. So I'm going to create another state variable. I'm going to call this info text and my info text is going to oh actually hold on my info text is going to say originally please enter an integer below okay so that'll be the first variable i'm going to create the next one i'm going to create is going to be for the the input that the user is going to give me. So I'm going to call this my num input. I probably should have called it an in input, int input. But remember, when we get input from a user, it comes in the form of a string, even though I'm asking them to enter an integer. So even though I'm asking for an integer, the way that the program takes it in is as a string, and then we'll convert it to an integer later. So I'm going to just create this empty string variable right now called num input for the users for the user to input stuff okay down in my v stack just be just below the the text that says you click the button blank times i am going to put some more text and my text oops the text that i'm going to be putting in there is my info text that's going to just instruct the user to input an integer down below. You can put a little padding on this. I'm going to put some color to it. I know I'm using the worst colors ever, but I just want it to stand out for the this video. And so for my foreground color, I'm going to use yellow. Okay, now comes the new part. The new part is the text field itself. So a text field allows the user, you can see when I start typing text, text field comes up. The text field allows the user a place to put some information in. So my text field, the hint behind the scenes is going to say, enter your integer here. So that's what it'll say kind of behind the scenes. And any text that they put into this will be stored in my num input variable. Now notice the dollar sign. The dollar sign is allowing that num input variable to be changed dynamically. So that's why we've got the dollar sign there. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of styling here, a little bit of padding, and I'm going to be, I want the background color to be white. So it stands out a little bit more. And when this text field pops up, since I'm only looking for an integer, I'm going to try to keep it, you know, try to keep the, the user honest. And I'm going to specify the type of keyboard that will pop up. And the type of keyboard I want to pop up, since I'm only looking for a number, is the decimal pad. So that's going to help them follow the directions a little bit better. And you'll see in a minute that it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to be close. All right, now I'm going to create a button. And the action is going to call a function, which I've yet to make. So Xcode's going to get mad at me here for a minute. The function I'm going to make is called checking. And it's going to say, that's not in scope. In other words, I have no idea what checking is. That's because I have not made that function yet. But I will. But in the meantime, let's add some text to this button. Let's just have it say submit. Um, let's see, let's add a little padding to this too. And I'm going to change the corner radius. Oops, 340. All right, I think that is it for right now. It's getting mad at me, but we've got a text, well, a text block, if you will, that's telling them that they need to enter an integer. We have a text field where they can enter their integer, and then we have a button they can click to submit their integer. Now let's go design this function to check if their answer actually is an integer. Okay, so our function up here, I'm going to, let's see. Oops. 
it again. Um, this function checks if the user entered an integer. What's our func is, oops, func is checking. Right, we've done this before, we've done this a million times. We're going to check to see if num input, if we convert that to an integer, do we get nil? So do we get the error? No, it's not actually an integer. So we're going to say, let's make the, um, the info text, we'll change the info text to say, please follow the direction integers only. Okay, so that's what the info text is going to do. It's going to change to that. And then what I'm going to do is pause this for a moment so they can read it, and then I'm going to change the text back to what it was originally, so the original instructions. So pausing for a moment, so doing like a time.sleep is a little bit more involved in, in, in Xcode, but here's how we can do that. We say dispatch queue. Q-U-E, U-E, make sure you spell it right, and apparently I'm not spelling it right, dis, nope, I spelled dispatch wrong, dispatch, there it is, dispatch Q, dot main, dot async, after, and the deadline is now plus two seconds. So all of that is to say, wait for two seconds, and then do whatever is inside of this. And what is inside of this is I'm going to change the info text back to please enter an integer below. So this was a lot. This is saying, all right, put this in the queue, make this wait for a little bit. This is gonna happen after two seconds. That's what this is. Two seconds later, change the info text back to this so it lets them see the warning, please follow the directions, integers only. Two seconds later, puts it back to the original instructions for the user. Okay, if what they enter is actually an integer, well, let's just do one more thing. So if it is actually an integer, well, I'm just going to change the um, info text to just say, nice job following directions. And you can put another weight on this one and have it go back to the same instructions again. But that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. That's good enough for you to see how to handle user input. So this is what it all looked like. Please enter an integer below. Entering our integer there. There's the submit button. It's hard to read, but that's, that's okay. So let's run this and see how it works. Right, so please enter an integer here. So notice the decimal pad popped up, but I can still actually put a decimal in. So if I put a decimal in, that is not an integer. So if I put in 2.4 and then hit submit, please follow the directions, integers only, and then two seconds later it went back to please integer, enter, enter an integer below. So let's try this again. If we take away the 0.4 and submit, nice job following directions.